I'm sure everyone knows that feeling of being unable to solve a math problem all too well. Or when you're in the middle of a math exam and you just forget every single thing you know about math. What do these situations have in common? Well, they can both be solved by calculators. The talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping devices that have been my guardian angels in all my math lessons. But have you ever wondered how these godsend magical machines actually work? No, the answer isn't that there's a tiny Asian man trapped in there crunching your numbers. But in reality, the process is actually a lot more interesting than you can imagine. At the heart of every calculator lies a tiny but mighty brain called the microchip. But don't underestimate it because of its size. In reality, the microchip in your calculator is actually a lot more powerful than even the computers used in the Apollo moon landing. When we press a button on a calculator, an electrical wire is pushed into contact with another one, creating a circuit between them. An electrical signal is then sent to the microchip. This signal travels through a network of circuits and transistors, guiding it to the right destination. Once the microchip receives the signal, it quickly performs the calculation. It does this by converting the numbers into binary. Humans use the number format called decimals, which has the digits 0 to 9, commonly believed to have been originated by the fact that we have 10 fingers and toes. However, computers don't use this decimal format. I guess because they don't have 10 fingers. Instead, they use binary code, which only has the digits 0 or 1. Any number can be represented by a string of these digits. These zeros and ones also correspond to on or off. So in effect, any decimal number can be represented by switches that are either on or off. When an operation is keyed in, the calculator uses logic gates to compare the switches that are active and create a new pattern of switches to represent the results. The microchip then sends the calculated answer to the display. If you look closely, you'll find that each number from 0 to 9 can actually be represented by a different combination of seven segments. This is used because it's the simplest way for the calculator, and it's also very visually understandable and recognizable for us humans. Win-win. Here, logic gates are used once again to figure out whether the calculator should darken each of the segments in order to represent the numbers and give us our answer. But one question I always had was, are calculators always right? You know, I would love to blame my calculator for all my math mistakes, but in reality, it is very, very rare for it to give a wrong answer. Unfortunately, it is usually always a user inputting error rather than something wrong with the actual technology. I mean, never say never, but it is most likely your fault. Anyway, and there you have it. Problems are solved, Tears are stopped and lives are saved with these magical devices. I hope you learned something new in this video. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel since that would help me out a lot. Um, I'm just now starting YouTube, but I will make sure to post every week, hopefully. Um, I do want to continue making educational content and hopefully also venture out into lifestyle videos such as doing school vlogs and stuff like that. Also, I recently participated in a science video competition called the Breakthrough Junior Challenge, and I made a video about how taking a photo on your smartphone works. So if you enjoyed this video, I think that you would really like that one too, and I'll leave the links for it in the description below. You can support me by liking that video on both the YouTube page and the Facebook page, and yeah, to increase my chance of winning. But anyway, if you have any video ideas or other suggestions, make sure to leave a comment down below. And if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye!